Dennis, it's Dennis, it's Dennis. I feel like we're besties now after this. What's up, guys? It's Denise Salcedo. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Speak Now Pro Wrestling. I'm your host, Denise Salcedo, and it is Friday here today. It is January 7th, and I told you guys when was it? On Wednesday, I said Fridays tends to be kind of crazy. There's always unexpected stuff that happen on Fridays. We always think it's going to be a chill, relaxed, end of the week sort of stream. And it always ends up kind of being a little bit nuts. And just to prove my point, uh, we're kind of going into a show where I feel we got plenty to talk about, not just on the AEW side of things, but also on the WWE side of things. If anything, probably more so the WWE side of things here today. Uh, as we got a pretty uh, major announcement, which we will dive into in just a second. Some very exciting stuff in what has been an insane week of wrestling, everybody. Like every single day, I feel like we've been getting just all of these like breaking stories that have been coming out nonstop. I've actually been doing a better job of keeping track of each and every single story that has been breaking every day this week. Like I've been writing on my notes app. I'll be like, this happened today and I'm going to keep a calendar of everything that happens in 2022. We are seven days in and I already have a good chunk of uh, notes written on there. But anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and get into these shows, talk about it all, go through it, all of that good stuff. But before we do, as always, everybody, I want to remind you that this is a very interactive show. I want to get your thoughts. I want to hear your opinions. Feel free to send in comments as we go throughout this show. On top of that, if you would like, you are more than welcome to send in a super chat at any point throughout this stream. If you do, you do get your comment or question read on this stream 100% guaranteed uh so we will get into that in just a second I don't even know where to begin guys I'm feeling overwhelmed today um but let's go actually we're gonna kick off with our super chats and then we're gonna go ahead and hop into pretty much everything that's been going on all right guys and I'm gonna kick things off today with Smackdown and then we're gonna end the show with AEW Rampage so we'll kind of get all of that stuff you know going and whatnot um, first of all, we got a super chat from Darf Steven 777 who says, Woohoo, 50K, congrats, Denise, much love to you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to everybody that followed me on Twitter. I finally hit 50K this time. Last year, I was sitting at 13,000 followers on Twitter this time last year. And now I am starting the year with 50K. Uh, that was a big growth, as many of you know. And I'm looking forward to see what happens there. But um, it took a lot of work. But thank you so much uh, to Darf Steven for sending this in. We got a super chat from Cadillac Carson who sends in a super chat saying, as they've announcing as they've announced the Women's Royal Rumble's entries, I'm both excited and frustrated. Like, oh my God, what a lineup, but why are you telling us this now? So we're obviously going to get into this in just a second, since this is really the major story of the evening, is going to be talking about the Women's Royal Rumble, the women that have been announced, uh, no, some people that you might not have expected, and we will get into that shortly. Uh, based so far on reactions that I've seen, I think a lot of, I did see a lot of people that shared the exact same feeling that Cadillac Carson did, where they kind of wish they would have had these surprises personally I agree with that but then at the same time uh, WWE needs the buzz for the Royal Rumble pay-per-view uh, but here's the thing too like let me correct myself I do think that they should have just announced the Mickey James thing today and I think that everybody else should have been a surprise and we'll talk about that obviously a lot more in just a second but thank you so much for getting us going with that super chat um, all right, let me see if we got anything more. If not, I'm going to go ahead and get started. All right, guys, let's get into it, everybody. Let's get into the show because there is so much to talk about. Um, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. Let's get into this, everybody. Let's kick things off 
with the Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar segment on SmackDown. So we already knew that Roman's, Roman Reigns had been cleared to return to SmackDown. As you all know, earlier this, uh, when was it? I wrote this down. Uh, literally the day of WWE Day 1, Roman Reigns tested positive for COVID-19. And we really didn't know. Uh, obviously, we weren't really given much of what the severity was or anything like that. Uh, you know, we really could only, we, we really, only were left to speculate with how you know things were going and you know now we fast forward to january 7th he is back he is cleared and it looks like everything is good to go so that's that's good to at least know that anyway so he's back today they had already promoted that we would be seeing the universal champion and the wwe champion essentially come together and what we got in this opening segment of smackdown was rather entertaining because we have what I am calling a flu, full blown, a full blown love triangle between Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, and Paul freaking Heyman. I think we already knew that we were kind of getting a love triangle between these three guys, but I think it became a little bit more clear uh, today. A, a bromance love triangle. Um, we got some funny stuff to, to kick this off, though, because we had Pat McAfee, who was super hyped on commentary, and he's basically, you know, cracking all of these jokes, basically saying that COVID tested positive for Roman Reigns, that it wasn't the other way around. He's really hyping up Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns comes out he goes on the mic and he basically starts talking about his isolation period and says that while he was isolating that he didn't want to see the two people that he didn't want to see were Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman. He really didn't get to say much because quickly then after Brock Lesnar came out. So Brock Lesnar comes out and he's all happy, having a good time, uh, laughing it up. The Brock Lesnar we've been seeing as of late. He gets to the ring and he openly mocks, he openly mocks Roman Reigns, mocks him for, you know, wanting to be acknowledged, acknowledged and et cetera. Um, and then. Right away, Brock Lesnar gets to the point and basically says, we should give the people what we want. We should do a title versus title match. And Roman Reigns basically says, look, dude, I don't do things on anybody's time other than my time. And I don't do business with people that work with garbage like Paul Heyman. And this sets off Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is just like, how could you talk about me like that, Roman? You were my tribal chief. I loved you. Uh, and this was phenomenal. Okay. Like phenomenal because Paul Heyman is just acting like a, uh, he reminded me of, you know, when you get broken up with or no, let me just say this, like, let's say you break up with someone, right? Because you moved on to somebody else. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you want to see your ex with somebody else. That is exactly what Roman, what uh, Paul Heyman reminded me of uh, in this whole thing. And so then Barack Lesnar snaps. He slaps at Paul Heyman when Paul Heyman is basically saying that he loved his tribal chief and Brock Lesnar's like WTF, like what the hell, right? So um, what you get here is this conflict between Roman and Brock Lesnar kind of like not, I don't know how to explain it. Like they weren't fighting for Paul Heyman, but they also like they didn't they didn't want to hurt Paul Heyman either. Or they didn't want the other person to necessarily hurt, hurt Paul Heyman. I can't really describe this, but it was a love triangle. That's the best way that I can put it. Uh, in the end, this closes out with Roman Reigns essentially Superman, Superman punching uh, Brock Lesnar. So this was kind of great. This was really funny. Uh, I didn't know who to root for in this picture because I really like Roman Reigns and I've been loving what he's doing and I've acknowledged him as my tribal chief. And as for Brock Lesnar, well, I love Brock Lesnar too. So it's a really hard uh, place to kind of pick. Um, but let's see what you guys think. Uh, send in some thoughts. How did you guys feel about this opening segment of uh, SmackDown? Let's get some opinions, everybody. And uh, let's see what we got here. We also had a pretty, uh, you know, interesting, Interesting finale, but we'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is a comment from Edwin Pacino who says, Love that Roman began the show. He had a nice reception. I agree. Brock Roman Heyman segment was different, but entertaining. And nobody else would be able to pull it off other than those three guys, especially Paul Heyman, because he can make you legitimately like crack up with some of the stuff that he says and the way that he acts and the way that he says it. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. Let's go ahead and um 
I think a lot of people definitely enjoyed this opening segment. But let's go ahead and move on from this. Uh, we got an appearance from Johnny Knoxville. As you all know, he's been in the news as of late since he came out on social media and basically said that he was going to be in the Royal Rumble. And I don't know if I missed the boat or something, but I thought it was already official. I thought Johnny Knoxville was already officially in the Royal Rumble. Or maybe I just jumped to conclusions or whatever. But it turns out he wasn't officially in the rumble just yet in my mind he was but apparently not you know officially anyway so he has this backstage confrontation with Sami Zayn Sami Zayn basically tells him you're not qualified uh he tells him stay out of everybody's way we get a match between Sami Zayn and Rick Boogs which is fairly impressive uh it's pretty much Sami Zayn putting over Rick Boogs Rick Boogs Rick Boogs looked phenomenal was strong showcasing his power literally lifting up Sami Zayn like if he weighed 10 pounds um but what we have to talk about here is that so Rick Boogs gets the win over Sami Zayn. He gets the win. It was a good win. Um, I think it, it served its purpose to get over Rick Boogs. But afterwards, we have Johnny Knoxville coming out, and he basically seizes an opportunity to throw out Sami Zayn out of the ring, basically showing, hey, I can eliminate somebody. I can eliminate somebody off the top rope. And then they announce that Johnny Knoxville is now officially in the Men's Royal Rumble. And I'm thinking... Huh. Okay. Cool. Thumbs up. Um, whatever. Nothing else much to add there, really. Uh, let's see what we got here, guys. Any thoughts on um this here? Um, somebody I actually thought for a second, no lie, when they did this backstage segment, you know what I thought? I thought they were gonna do a qualifying match. I thought we were gonna get Sammy Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville. Uh in a qualifying match. I don't know why I thought for a split second this is what's going to happen. To be honest, I kind of would have wanted it. Um, so there you guys go. That's pretty much what happened there. Um, all right, guys. Let's go ahead and hop into the big uh, news of the day, everybody. So let's talk about this. We got plenty uh, to sort of discuss here. And this is in regards to the Royal Rumble. So I was watching the show and first I tend to tune out video packages and entrances that's usually the part where I'm like writing down my notes or I'm tweeting something or whatever else you know I'm doing like I usually just start watching the second the bell rings and hey this is time for the match right and so I was just sitting there and I wasn't really like focusing on what I was seeing and then I realized Oh, snap, they're announcing people for the Royal Rumble. They're announcing some of the women. And I kept seeing the names coming in. And for some reason, I was not necessarily, I don't know, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. And I did something really dumb. As I was watching the show, I looked and I was like, did I click on a different episode? Am I watching a different episode of SmackDown? Am I on the right stream? And it was like a split second where like my brain didn't like, click because I saw these names that were being brought up and I was like what is happening here like things weren't connecting anyways so we essentially have all these announcements are made on who's going to be in the women's royal rumble they announce 18 names here are the 18 names Nikki Ash Aaliyah Natalia Mickey James impact knockout champion Mickey James We'll touch that. We'll touch that a little bit more in a second. Shayna Baszler, Summer Rae, Tamina, Dana Brooke, Kelly Kelly, holla, holla, uh, Rhea Ripley, Lita, Naomi, both Bella Twins, Carmella, Zelina, Dana Brooke, Michelle McCool, and Shotzi Blackheart. Um, so the big thing that we have to talk about here is Mickey James, because Mickey James was released from WWE on April 15th, 2021. She was released. Then after that, there was a terrible, um, you know, not so favorable trash bag incident where her stuff was essentially sent, sent to her in a trash bag. And she essentially kind of called them out for doing that. Other women came out and basically said that they had gone through the exact same thing or had received their stuff essentially in a trash bag as well. Stephanie McMahon 
later on issued a public apology to Mickey James. Since then, we have seen Mickey James kind of go out and do a bunch of other stuff. She did NWA and she was the executive producer for NWA Empower. She's been doing stuff for Impact. She's been feuding with Deanna Perrazzo. I literally just interviewed her last month because we were talking about Hard to Kill, which is taking place tomorrow. She has a Texas death match against Deanna Perrazzo in which she is defending the Impact Knockouts Championship. So with all of that being said, you're seeing this and you're just thinking like, what is going on? Mickey James, the current Impact Knockouts champion, has been promoted to be an entrant in the WWE Royal Rumble. It's one of those things that you, you really did not expect to happen whatsoever. It was very surprising to see. And uh, so let's kind of, there's so many different things to touch on here, right? But uh, let's go ahead and kind of talk about a little bit of the reactions from people and what people like Scott Demore posted, etc. So Scott Demore has and basically tweeted out. Basically, he tweeted out multiple things, but some of the stuff that he tweeted out is that. Um, let me get this one second. He said, "Quote." Well, 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 congrats to at Impact Wrestling Knockouts world champion Mickey James and congrats to WWE for finally walking through the forbidden door. Welcome to the party. The forbidden door, we've been talking about the forbidden door, but WWE has been as of late, as of, you know, recent WWE history, they have, you know, been isolated. They don't necessarily, you know, uh, really do these forbidden door type of stuff. They don't do this. Uh, in the mid 90s, they did have all Japan wrestlers enter in the Rumble. We did see that, but that was back then. They did the ECW stuff. Okay, but that was, you know, back then. But in recent WWE history, we haven't had something like this. Now, I know a lot of people were like, you know, this is the thing that you do need to know about the WWE Impact relationship is that they've been cordial. They have been cordial with one another. So some people didn't really see this as a big deal because they were like, okay, Impact and WWE have sort of worked together in the past. But here's the thing. They work together to kind of, um, you know, WWE uh, Impact Wrestling lent WWE like footage for the AJ Styles documentary. So it was more on like the footage end of things where they loaned footage for like documentaries and stuff like that. So this has actually been the biggest thing that they have actually done, which is have Mickey James, uh, who has BTW. I know that Sean Ross Sapp did put out that she is not officially signed or that he, I think he put that, uh, he's not sure or that if she signed or not with Impact Wrestling, like it has not been made clear. So make that for what you will. Uh, but regardless, this is something where they actually, you know, mention that she's the champion and all of that. And then you have Impact Wrestling and Scott Demore basically tweeting out all of this stuff. So obviously, I don't know if you guys want to see this as a, you know, possibility of, hey, maybe WWE is going to be working with Impact Wrestling or this could be a one time thing. This could probably lead to nothing after this. But regardless, it is still something that was executed and something that is going to be happening and they still impact wrestling got a nice little you know got some nice little publicity today especially heading into their hard to kill pay-per-view so now before i kind of continue and talk about this a little bit more i do want to get your reactions on how you guys felt about the mickey james announcement were you as surprised as i was do you think it's a big deal or do you kind of just kind of feel like this is really not going to go anywhere this is probably the only thing that we're going to get or do you see it as hey maybe this is baby steps this could possibly lead to something else I, I don't know what is your speculations right now on this topic and then we're going to kind of go ahead and talk uh, just a tad bit more on that and then we'll move forward on to uh, the rest of the uh, things here uh, so let's see what we got here, guys. Let's go some, uh, let's get some comments here. Let's see what we people got. Um, this is a comment from Al Profe Jr. 88, who says the result of tomorrow's women's title match will be telling. It definitely will. Um, if, if Mickey James, if Mickey James is signed with Impact Wrestling and she is staying with Impact Wrestling, I really hope that tomorrow she retains the knockouts championship. 
Now, if she loses, I think that's going to obviously tell us, hey, maybe this was just, you know, a couple of appearances, et cetera. Uh, you know, she's going to be moving on to other things, you know, doing something else. Maybe, I don't know, maybe even a perhaps, perhaps, I don't know. This is me speculating. Perhaps even a return to WWE. I do not know. Um, this is all just very kind of, you know, out of the blue. And we're really going to see tomorrow. Tomorrow will give us a little bit of a more room to speculate I think as to what is going on here if this is something where it was just specific for Mickey James to be in the rumble or if this is going to be something more now on top of this uh let's get a couple more comments and then we'll talk a little bit more about all this other stuff here um let's see let's see let's see Let's get some comments. This one's from James Young, who says WWE, real WWE realizes that AEW is trying to beef up the women's division. Indirect smart move by WWE, bringing in Mickey James and giving a nod to Impact. Pulls the rug from under AEW. Uh, I do not completely agree with this. I do not think it pulls the rug out of under out of AEW because AEW is doing their own thing and they kind of got their ball rolling. They're doing their own thing. Um, but it for me, it just kind of goes to show that. They're, the big issue that we've been talking about is that so many women have the women's rosters for for WWE is very, very slim. And there was even like a running joke heading into the Rumble where people were like, do they even have 30 women to fill, you know, for the Rumble? Do they even have those 30 women? There was that running joke online. And I think there was like I counted and I don't remember what it was, but I think it was like nine women on the SmackDown roster and I think 11 or 12 on the Raw roster, something like that. Uh, and obviously, you know, you can incorporate the NXT women uh, if you wanted to, but it's just like, regardless, there was that running joke of, hey, they don't even have 30 women to fill. And we were expecting to see, um, you know, some of the legends, for some of the legends to come in, obviously Lita being one of those, uh, Kelly Kelly being one of those as well, the Bella Twins being one of those. Um, I think we were already expecting that, but we weren't necessarily expecting, uh, you know, Mickey James. We weren't expecting it. I, I love Mickey James. I'm so excited about her being in it. I just didn't expect it whatsoever. Um, also, guys, uh, if you want to get your question, your comment, or your statement read on the stream, you want to get your opinion heard, please feel free to send in a super chat. If you do, I will read your comment on here. Additionally, it does help me out and keeps me fed. All right, uh, Shelton Jackson sends in a super chat saying, I remember when WWE and Impact did an exchange when Flair went into the Hall of Fame with the Horsemen and in exchange, Impact got Christian to come to slam Slammiversary. Uh, thank you so much, Shelton Jackson, for also sending this in. I appreciate it. Uh, we got a comment from Ter Terrence Sullivan who says, Mickey James has been doing stuff with Impact for six months and has had a bunch of matches. LOL. She has had a bunch of matches. Definitely has had a bunch of matches. Um, Don J56 says, I don't think that they would go to the trouble of promoting her if it wasn't more there. Yeah, that's the thing, too. Like, you can, uh, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Because I see it both ways, man. I see it as there's a possibility for it to be more. But I also see it kind of like Nick Kavanaugh, who just sent in a comment saying it feels like a one off um regardless it's still something to talk about and they really kept this like hush hush because uh i think even sean tweeted that he had not heard like anything about this so they did keep this very hush hush i i, I wonder for me i'm curious to see how long it took for them to essentially work this out and make it happen. Like that for me is what I'm most curious about. Uh, Ethan Goldstein, thank you so much for sending in a super chat saying Lita was a big shocker for me. I was very, oh, I'm so excited to see Lita guys. So excited. Um, really cannot wait for that. Really, really cannot wait for that. Um, okay. Uh, additionally, there was something else that I did want to talk about in regards to this news with Impact Wrestling. Uh, let me just pull out this tweet here so that I can read it off of this tweet. Um, one of the other things that we do have to touch on, guys, because uh, regardless, I kind of feel that we have to 
talk a little bit about uh, Scott Demore and really what he has done with Impact Wrestling because I kind of want to give kudos where kudos are deserved. And so Scott Demore came back, I believe, to Impact in 2017, but it wasn't until, I believe, 2019 when he kind of basically, you know, took charge and really took on all these responsibilities. But I do think that he has done so much positive stuff for Impact Wrestling because they literally, they now have wrestlers that actually want to go to Impact Wrestling. They are also working with so many other wrestling promotions. And I'm going to read this off of the Impact Wrestling tweet um, that they sent out. It says, quote, in the last 12 months, Impact has worked with AEW, NWA, New Japan, AAA, and now WWE. Um, and then also on top of that, tomorrow at Hard to Kill, we are seeing Jonathan Gresham defend the Ring of Honor World Championship on Impact territory. So I do kind of feel like uh, we kind of have to talk about that. You know, kudos to Scott Demore because I think he has really... Uh, He's really changed a lot of things for Impact Wrestling in a positive way. Um, so I do think that needs to be said, uh, which is pretty cool. <laughs> um, all right, guys, let's get some comments. Also, Charlotte Flair did say that she would be entering in the Royal Rumble as well. So that should also be noted, too. Um, but let's see what you guys are saying uh, in regards to all of this. We got a comment from Revolution to Evolution who says, the buzz they created with this, I think that's why they did it, and I love it. Pomi Wrestling says, this is a very confusing move. It seems very exciting on a surface level, but also seems extremely unlike WWE and its current direction to stick with it. Yeah, it seems very... Like, we're seeing WWE go in, like, one direction, right? Like, we're seeing where they're going, right? With the releases and the changes that they're making and all of these stuff that they're doing with their hiring process, NXT 2.0, and all of that stuff, right? So we're seeing them go a certain direction, but this kind of feels a little bit like we're, we're, we're going another way now. Like, this doesn't feel like part of the direction that they're going in, which is, uh, you know, interesting. It really just adds a whole other layer to this whole thing. So we will see what happens, guys. Um, and uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. This is from Antrite08, who says, Impact making moves, respect Mickey James in the Rumble, take me off grounds like WTF, am I watching? A lot of people were freaking out. Um, I put out the tweet right away the second it was announced, and people were like, what? Keep in mind, a lot of people weren't watching SmackDown. So I was like, what? You log on to Twitter and you're like, hey, this is happening. This is going on. Um, all right, you guys. So there you go. That is the Mickey James topic, uh, the impact topic. If you are you watch the show on replay, please go ahead and let me know in the comment section how you guys felt about it, what you think is going to come of this, if even anything is going to come of this. But let's go ahead and move on. On from this. All right. Um, after this, really quickly, we got uh Viking Raiders, Corbin, Madcap Moss. Uh, not much to say there, guys. I'm gonna move on from that. Uh, Sheamus enters himself into the men's royal rumble. The men's royal rumble so far. Uh, kind of stinks so far. Uh, they don't really have major like anybody besides Rey Mysterio. Um, Rey Mysterio, Dominic, Austin Theory, Street Profits, Johnny Knoxville, uh, and Sheamus now have all been entered into the men's Royal Rumble. But obviously, we still got plenty to go. Um, all right. Pierce also mentions that he has chosen an opponent for Roman Reigns. The show essentially closed off with Seth Rollins who I may add is on the Raw brand, Seth Rollins appears on SmackDown and just starts laughing in the face of Roman Reigns. Now, they didn't say this is his opponent or anything like that, but based off of that and based off of what Adam Pierce had said previously, I'm assuming that's the direction we're headed in, which I'm looking forward to it. Don't get me wrong, but it just kind of continues to show how slim the options are for real competitors on the SmackDown brand to face Roman Reigns at the caliber of a pay-per-view that is Royal Rumble. There was literally nobody else, and you had to bring in somebody from the Raw brand. And based on the way that the show ended with him just popping up, laughing in his face, I'm assuming that's the direction they are headed in. Obviously, we'll find out more in just a second. Someone says that uh, Mike New York says it was confirmed 
Was it confirmed by WWE? Because I did not see that on their Twitter account. Uh, let me know. Follow up on that. Let me know, guys, because I didn't see that. Uh, Devin says, wait, what? Yeah, Seth Rollins appeared on SmackDown and laughed in Roman Reigns' face. And from the looks of it, that's the match that they're going here. Uh, Cameron Mumford says, brand split. What brand split? Zeno Hour points out that it could be a swerve. It could. I don't know. Um, all righty. We got Usos versus the New Day in a street fight for the tag team titles. This was fun. Um, they ha- I'm glad they made it into a street fight considering that we've seen this match a million times. The Usos win. It was a good time. All right, guys. Um, oh, thank you. Mike says that Sean tweeted it. All right, cool. Thank you for letting me know. Um, all righty, guys. Let's go ahead and jump into AEW Rampage because we got more to talk about with that too. Jesus, what a night. Sheldon Jackson sends in a super chat saying, moral of the story. Make new stars in case things go wrong. Shocking, right? Shocking. What a shocking concept. Uh, thank you so much, Sheldon, for sending this in. Um, all right, guys. Additionally, before we continue on, friendly reminder, if you are listening to the audio version of this, if you're watching here live or if you're watching the replay, do not forget to head on over to F4W online over on YouTube. Click that subscribe button. We have officially hit 83,000 subscribers. We are on our way to 100K. So make sure you guys click that subscribe button. On top of that, surprise, tomorrow, no, Sunday, On Sunday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, I will be doing a bonus stream here on this network. Uh, I will be on to talk about both Wrestle Kingdom Night 3 and AEW Battle of the Bouts. So if you guys want to talk about both of those shows, I will be on here on Sunday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to talk about both of those shows. Um, All right, guys, let's go ahead and continue on. Let's get into AEW Rampage. So we had Jake Atlas versus Adam Cole, baby. And um, this one was something that obviously, you know, we were looking forward to because at the tapings, we found out that uh, Jake Atlas, unfortunately, got hurt, uh, busted his knee. Very, very unfortunate. He did tweet out today that he is going to... uh, Let me read that. I should probably read that tweet verbatim. So I don't want to put anything. I don't want to say the wrong thing. Uh, He said, quote, I'm so freaking proud of that match. Thank you, Adam Cole, for pushing me to give you me. My knee will be just fine. Thank you guys for your concern. I won't be gone long. So Jake Atlas won't be gone long. Good to know. Because after this performance, I think that more people, especially people that may have been like doubting whether or not he should be in AEW, I think after this performance, I think it proved a lot of people, uh, you know, wrong. Because Jake Atlas went in this match with Adam Cole and they had a banger. Um, Gualberto Maldonado sends in a super chat saying, uh, who is your favorite to win the Women's Royal Rumble? Uh, as of this moment, I legitimately do not know. I haven't even like really... I know a lot of people have been asking me, but I haven't really thought about it. Like, well, that's kind of like I haven't thought about it outside when people ask me. I feel like I've just been so thrown off by all the announcements and really just finding out who's in it in the first place. Um, so I haven't really decided I, like who I think should win off of the names that have been announced. Off of the names that have been announced, if any of these people were to win it, I would probably say... From the list here, I would either say Rhea Ripley because she needs to spice things up. They need to spice things up for her again. Or maybe even Shotzi Blackheart based on the names that have been announced thus far. Um, thank you so much to uh, Golberto. All right. Um, so back to AEW Rampage. Back to Jake Atlas versus Adam Cole. Um, all right. So here we go. Um, this was a good match, guys. And I was so happy for Jake Atlas, seriously. And But at the same time, I'm so bummed that he got hurt because, damn, uh, you know, we talked about this last week. It just sucks. You're starting a new job. You obviously want to, you know, make the best impression. You want to, you know, really put your best foot forward and pretty much be able to show everything that you can, right? Right off the bat, anybody would want to do that. So it does suck that, you know, that this injury is going to, you know, halt him for a bit and, you know, keep him off for a little bit which is sucks, but I'm pretty sure when he comes back, it'll all be okay. But 
right at the top of this commentary does mention that both Jake Atlas and Adam Cole used to work in the same company together, uh, not just the same company, but that they appeared on the same TV show, but they never got to wrestle each other. So I did kind of like that they added that because it's true, right? It's definitely true. Um, but dude, Jake Atlas brought it in this match and you can tell Adam Cole was just like happy to be in this match with him, happy to, you know, really, you know, help him showcase what he can do. We saw a really nice standing moon, saw a nice roundhouse kick by Jake Atlas, lots of movement really at the top, really uh, lots of nice movement at the top of this uh, show. I mean, excuse me, the top of this match. We saw a really nice aggressive uh, double drop kick from, uh, from Atlas to Cole. That was good. I love the backbreaker that Adam Cole did during this match. That was nice. Uh, the entire match looked really solid. But in the end, we do see, uh, you know, we do see the uh, we do see the injury. We do see uh, Jake Atlas essentially tap out, lose via a submission. But I do want to say that throughout this entire match, though, he did get a lot a lot they gave him a lot to really show so i feel like just based on what we saw tonight based on what the fans saw tonight i think people will for the most part be excited to see what he has to bring later on and it was clear that you know they kind of you know went straight for the finish got it over and done with even post-match they sent out orange cassidy to essentially you know be that buffer of whatever they were supposed to do post-match originally. And then you just see the medical team checking up on Jake Atlas. So good performance, I think. And I'm excited to see what Jake Atlas brings to the table. And I hope he's not gone for too long. Uh, so send in some thoughts, guys. How do you guys feel about um, how do you guys feel about this uh this match? How did you guys feel about Jake Atlas's debut? Uh, let's get some comments in here. Let's see what we got, guys. Um this one is from Pomi Wrestling, who says, fun fact, aside from a match with Alley Knight, this match was longer than any other singles that, what? Any other singles match that Jake Atlas had in NXT? No way. For reals? No way. I don't believe it. No, I mean, I believe you, but I don't believe it. Damn. No way. Okay, I feel like I got to go relook. I, that can't be right. That can't be right. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we saw some lengthy matches with Jake Atlas and NXT. I feel like we did. I feel like we did. I didn't time them or anything. Wow. Okay, that's insane. Um, question the mark says, a good match. Shame about the injury at the end. Impressed by Atlas. Completely agree. Completely agree. All right. Um, let's get into we got a uh we got a promo from Andrade. Andrade wants to buy Darby Allen. What is happening here? Somebody tell Andrade, you can't buy people. Uh, from the looks of it, he basically asks uh, Mr. Sting, like he said, Mr. Sting, uh, you know, what's your price for the, for the, I think he said for the boy, or for the kid, something like that. Uh, essentially wanting to buy Darby. What? <laughs> what? I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Oh my God. This is a comment from Ron who says Andrade is hilarious. He's becoming one of my goats. I enjoy his work uh, every show. <laughs> Question the mark says Andrade thinks everyone works for someone. Uh, someone's got to tell him. We got to tell him. Jesus. Uh, I thought it was funny because obviously that's, you know, he basically, we you get what he was trying to say. Like basically the understanding is he believes that everybody works under somebody. So like, hey, what's his price? Because I want your man with me essentially. But I think the way that it came across, it was like, you want to buy Darby? What? <laughs> uh, so it was pretty funny. Ed Pump says, what in the human trafficking is going on here? Somebody tell Andrade it is illegal. Um, I love that. Uh, Nick Cavanaugh says Andrade is the best. Uh, Antrite08 says that Andrade promo went over my head. It's simple. He wants to buy Darby. <laughs> I sound ridiculous even saying it out loud. Um, anyways, I love Andrade. Look sharp, man. Um, if I were Darby, I'd be very worried. Um, <laughs> Pile Driver Finisher says he wants that kid. My God. My goodness. Uh, Devin says, honestly, an interesting twist that I wasn't expecting. I'll give them that. Yep. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Chair Rack says, I'm wrong. I'm wrong? What do you mean I'm wrong? Tell me. What, 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 what did you make of this? Because that's what I made of this promo. Uh, what did you make of this promo? Go ahead and let me know. Um, all right, you guys. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into uh, everybody's favorite. Everybody's favorite. 
please blow up the chat. If you are, oh, I don't want, I don't know if YouTube would flag me for saying hooker. If you are a hooker, please blow up the chat because we got Hook versus Aaron Solo. Uh, let's get into this match. This was a very, very, uh, this is a fun one, guys. I enjoyed it. Um, freaking Hook looked phenomenal again. Looked very crisp. Everything he does is executed very nicely, which I enjoy. Uh, we saw him essentially lock in a cravat on Aaron. That was pretty nice. We got to see that, you know, in the beginning of this match. We saw him hit, hit him with a bunch of... Um, Body shots, got him with a headbutt. That was good, too. We see QT Marshall getting involved, trying to pull him by the boot. And uh, we see we see Hook do a phenomenal uh, head and arm capture Tazplex, which I really enjoyed to see. That was pretty cool. Uh, that's obviously something that is not easy to do. Uh, he ends up hitting the uh, red rum for the win gets the win, looks legit. And then afterwards he ends up getting QT Marshall in the same, uh, the same, uh, the same tags, plex, tax, Taz plex. Ta Jesus. I can't talk right now. Um, anyway, so that was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Another good match for hook. Uh, let's get some thoughts guys. How did you guys feel about hook? And let's see what people are saying here. Um, oh God, I hope YouTube does it. I hope YouTube doesn't say like, Hey Denise, we can't do your show because you say hooker. No, I don't think so. I hope not. Um, super chat from Taryn Sullivan, who says Hollywood Salcedo, keep up the ex excellent work. Thank you very much. I'm trying. I am trying. I appreciate uh, appreciate your support, man. I really do. Uh, Ken Boy says we blowing up hookers now. Uh, we're all hookers in here, man. And let's go through a couple more comments. Everybody's pretty much putting over hook. We got one from Justin Williamson, who says hook is a total badass badass. Uh, let's see what we got here. Nick Cavanaugh says that Al Camino is flawless. Uh, Tony wants more hookers. <laughs> Question the mark is putting over hookamania. Antrite08 says hook is savage and I'm down for it. Tony says moral, moral, moral. You can't have one hooker without the other. My God. Ed Pum says taken down for the promotion of hookers. Please nobody snitch on me to YouTube. I would appreciate that. Do not snitch on me. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and move on. Good stuff there. Um, we also have an announcement. Actually, I might as well go through this now. So we have a, uh, you know, some switch ups to the AEW Battle of the Bouts. We are no longer going to be seeing Cody versus Sammy. Uh, due to, I believe, what did they say? The, I think it was medical reasoning, something like that. Make what you will of that. But instead, we are getting Dustin Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara for the interim TNT championship. I think that is a really really good uh replacement for this match obviously dustin has been ha has had incredible matches throughout his career more so uh what i we would be what we've been seeing in aew so i can't wait to see what he's gonna do with sammy during this and i think the interim tnt championship uh that's the best way that they could have gone about with this um on top of that we're getting Britt baker and reho Britt Baker has, again, never beaten Riho. They've been playing up that up a whole lot. So we're going to be getting that match for the AEW Women's World Championship. And then they also added that we are going to be getting, uh, Ricky Starks is going to be defending the FTW Championship against Matt Seidel. And I just got to say, hell yeah, because I do think that Ricky Starks, um, you know, I spoke to him. He's been cleared for the longest time, man. Uh, he should have been out there having more matches, and this is officially it. Should have been out there, you know, defending the FTW bout. Uh, so I'm glad that they're actually putting this championship up on this card. So good stuff there. Um, thank you so much to Jimmy Belinko for sending in a super chat. Jimmy says, uh, since you're actually able to talk with people who matter, do you think you can pass on to whoever sends Rampage to... Do you think you can pass on to whoever sends Rampage tapes to Fight TV to stop cutting off women's matches? They're the only ones interrupted. So I don't watch on Fight TV. What do you mean they keep cutting off the women's matches? Do they keep, do they do like a picture on picture or what exactly is going on there? Because I, again, I don't watch on Fight TV, so I don't have that issue. Uh, but yeah. Let me know what's going on there. I, I don't know what's going on there. And that's weird. They're the only ones that are being interrupted. Okay, I'll take your word for it. Again, I don't watch on Fight TV, but uh, that's a good thing to know. Uh, thank you so much, Jimmy, for sending in this super chat. I really appreciate you sending this in. 
Um, let me see. I wonder if we have anybody else here that watches on Fight TV. If you guys do, let me know. I, I watch on Sling TV, guys, so I don't really got that issue. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, last, but last but not least, let's get into the main event, everybody. Uh, Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz versus Daniel Garcia and 2.0. Uh, this was a fun match, guys. Eddie Kingston literally brutalized Daniel Garcia with the trash bin. Uh, that was pretty fun. We saw the utilization of the the fans essentially having those big giant. Uh, those big head things. I'm not sure what they're called, but we saw those being used to hit people over the head. That was fun. Uh, we saw a really nice frog splash from Santana. Good stuff. Uh, we see Santana get powder in the face. Uh, one of the things that I do want to put over in particular about this is that Daniel Garcia, I feel like when he came into AEW, my first impression was, okay, he's good, right? But he's so young and he's so youthful. And I didn't really see much on, um, I don't know, I didn't really see much in terms of like his facials or his personality, right? I feel that this tonight was like the most personality I've seen from him. And I loved it. I was like, what? I feel like we finally got a good glimpse at the edgy version of Daniel Garcia. He was doing some great selling during this. Uh, on top of that, his facials were good. He was heated up, like turning red. Oh, I really like that. Like, I feel today I became a little bit of a bigger fan of Daniel Garcia than I already was. And he's a really nice kid too, by the way. I got to meet him at Defy Wrestling and he was so nice. He literally just went up to me and was like, hey, nice to meet you. And I was like, you're so sweet. Um, But... It, it, I, I want to put that over today because that stood out the most to me from this match was kind of, I feel like he's coming into his own person a little bit more and you're really starting to see that. And that was something that was very noticeable to me uh, during this match here. So I really like that. Um, in the end, we do see Daniel Garcia hit Eddie Kingston with a ring bell. Um, sounded very nasty and uh, for the finish, we see Santana and Ortiz hit uh, 2.0 with a fun combination of like several kicks and then eventually a discus clothesline. And that is how we end up seeing Eddie Kingston and Santana and Ortiz get the win here. Post-match, uh, we do see 2.0 and Daniel Garcia, you know, try to go back in for the attack. But instead, uh, Jericho comes in to try to help out his guys. And that how the sh that is how the show closes out so good stuff man all around i think for the most part it was an entertaining show uh i think the highlights of the show for me was really jake atlas versus adam cole i thought that match was really good i really liked seeing hook i thought that was really good too oh man oh so hold on one guys i forgot i skipped uh Britt baker and jamie because i i thought for some reason i had talked about it um oh, i've skipped Two things. Pardon me. I also skipped Britt Baker uh, and Jamie versus Ruby Soho and Riho really quickly. Uh, it was a quick match. Honestly, Riho got the win by pinning uh, Jamie. And from the looks of it, we're having some sort of, um, you know, a little bit of uh, frustration with Britt with Jamie because Jamie was the one that lost the match for her team. So Britt looked very frustrated and ended up shoving her. So I'm glad that they gave uh, Riho and Ruby the win here because obviously we're heading into that match with Britt Baker and Riho. So you want to see Riho uh, get some wins here. So I think that's good. Um, we also did get a promo from Dan Lambert where he basically says that there's a lot of sucking going along, going around at AEW, which explains why Brandy Rhodes has her job according to Dan Lambert. So that was the only stuff I skipped and that was pretty much the entire show um we got a super chat from cadillac carson thank you so much to cadillac carson who says eddie kingston is the man uh, him santana and ortiz just fed up during that face-to-face -face segment and just leave to find 2.0 and garcia it was good stuff man good stuff thank you so much to cadillac carson for sending that in um we got another super chat from tv Gu uh tv guyao uh, thank you so much for sending this in he says uh during the women's match they did cut and went straight to ad break where most of the matches they say they go to picture in picture and fight tv keeps getting commentary and full picture hold on let me read that again during the women's match they did cut and went straight to an ad break okay where most of the matches they say they go to picture in picture and fight tv keeps getting commentary and full picture okay so why is how long has that been happening for all right that's that sucks honestly that sucks because i know for me like when I watch on Sling TV, 
usually the women's matches, they usually do picture in picture. I, I noticed that a lot. The women's matches tend to get a lot of picture in picture, um, but they don't necessarily cut away to an ad break. Like we do get a picture in picture or, uh, or we don't get a picture in picture or we don't get like a, like we get, we get the normal stuff. That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. Thank you so much for sending this in um, for letting, for spreading the word here. Um, thank you. And also for sending that in the super chat as well. I really appreciate that. Um, okay, let me go through a couple more comments and making sure that I got most of everything here. Uh, let's see what we got. This one is from It's Bobby Thunder, who says, also, Jake Alice was injured during the show. He had to get helped out of the ring and couldn't put any weight on his left knee. Also, the finish was changed due to the injury. Yep. Um, and everything before that was good. So I'm glad that we got to see that. Uh, this is a comment from Michael Jefferson, who says, hope AEW start to push Santana and Ortiz. I've been saying this, been preaching for it, been praying for it. Uh, Michael Jefferson goes on to say, they're really talented. And with Red Dragon and possibly the Hardys and Briscoes coming in, it'll be easy for them to get lost in the shuffle. And they've been kind of pushed to the side, which is unfortunate. Not pushed to the side, but... You would have thought that they would have been champions a long time ago or featured a little heavily more as a tag team versus members of the inner circle. Um, all right, guys, and let's go through a couple more comments and see what we got here. And I think we got pretty much everything here. This is from Question the Mark, who says there was the same amount of time on the match on TNT, picture and picture and fight. Some of the match was edited for time since it's a one hour show. Uh, Matt Kensley says the women's matches for me have the commercial start picture and picture, but go into full commercial halfway through. It doesn't do that. Do that doesn't do that during the men's matches. Wow. All right. Damn, that sucks. OK, so I mean, that's pretty much what we got here, guys. I will make sure that I got everybody's comment. But for oh, thank you, Devin. I will make sure to do that. Who says I should ask Luke about that since he uses fight? Does he use fight? I don't know. I think he does actually. Okay, he probably does. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for coming into the show. I really thank you guys for coming in, especially on a Friday night, which I know is kind of, you know, it's a busy night for those who have a life. Uh, but if you're like me and you're at home watching wrestling, thank you so much for joining me here today. Um, on top of that, if you did watch the replay of this, please go ahead and let me know what you guys thought in the comment section below. Uh, please, guys, if you can help me out, please share the show. If you enjoyed it, please uh, share the stream. Let your friends know. Spread the word. We got one final super chat um, coming in. This is the last one. Uh, thank you so much from Christopher Marino, who says, this feud between Garcia 2.0 and Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz is only dragging Santana and Ortiz down. I'm just not into 2.0. They're dragging this feud down, and I just hate it. Um, I'm not that big on 2.0. To be honest, I, I like Daniel Garcia, and I think I'm more so like I'm okay with the 2.0 guys, but I'm not like OMG about them, to be honest. Uh, I feel like this is really the focus is more so going to be on Eddie Kingston and Chris Jericho, and it's not – I don't feel like the focus is really on Santana and Ortiz, which is one of the issues that I do think they need to, you know, start separating them and make them their own, you know – highlight them as a tag team as you would a tag team um so i do kind of hope that we do see that a little bit more um, thank you so much to christopher marina for sending in uh, the last super chat of the day Alrighty, everybody thank you guys so much i appreciate you appreciate you all for everything i will see you here on sunday if you do want to talk about wrestle kingdom night three and AEW battle of the bouts tomorrow i will also be over on fightful and i'm going to be covering impact wrestling's hard to kill so if you guys want to watch that you can tune in for that as well and then i will be back here next week on tuesday for nxt 2.0 wednesday for AEW dynamite and friday for smackdown and rampage until next time enjoy your weekend everybody and i'll see you around bye everybody take care